We get a huge update on Brendan Dillon, and this will be perfect for the Canucks. And McKean drops another prospect ranking video, and yet again, the Vancouver Canucks prospects get disrespected. We'll get into that later on this episode. Before I start, I just want to say shout out to the 2,588 of you guys that are subscribed. We're trying to reach 3,000 before the draft, which is just two weeks away. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. We'll be all season long and off season giving you updates on the Canucks from prospects, trades, rumors, anything you can think of and want to see. So make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video. But with that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which is Brendan Dillon is the perfect fit. Now, Brendan Dillon, I'm sure everyone knows Brendan Dillon, and he's a hometown boy. But on Elliot Freeman's 32 Thoughts podcast today, he did have a segment on him. Just heard he's going to free agency. I think there was some conversation between him and the Jets. You never rule anything out, but I don't think there is going to be any resigning with the Jets before the window opens. So I expect Brendan Dillon to hit the open market. Now, obviously, the Canucks are dealing with a ton of free agents themselves. So why are we talking about another team's free agent? And we'll get into that pretty shortly. Brendan Dillon, at the age of 33, from British Columbia, is ha coming off a career high in goals with the Winnipeg Jets with eight goals in his 77 games played he had 20 points this year he was a plus 20 and in the three games he played in the playoffs he also put up three points we can see in three straight seasons he did have 20 points he had a 19 point season just before that so if you want to round up that's four straight years of putting up 20 points on the Jets when you do continue on and you do look at just kind of the smaller things, and if you don't want to say smaller things, the bigger impact Dylan can bring. When you look at the bottom, highlighted in yellow, Brendan Dylan had 241 hits in just 77 games this year. You can see last year in 82 games, he had 198 hits. You can see the year before that, 212. This is a guy that finished the season with 92 pims, so you know he's going to bring physicality. Like I said, he scored eight goals this year, and in three straight years, he's blocked over a 100 shots. Brendan Dillon is a shutdown defenseman that's going to be a hot commodity and I think with him from being BC wanting to go home in his later years I think this could be the perfect fit for him and Griffin what's your thoughts on getting a guy like Brendan Dillon in on that third pairing? Brendan Dillon has quite honestly been at the top of my list as far as free agents that I would love for the Canucks to sign. We saw a few weeks ago that he was on Donnie and Dolly and hinted towards the possibility of coming to Vancouver. We covered it in that video. Uh, we did a video covering that as well. And in that video, we uh, I expressed how excited I would be to have him come back home. The fans would love to see that as well. And how he is just that shutdown defenseman, like you said. He's able to lay the body like Zadorov. So if they're not able to bring Zadorov back, or if Zadorov or one of the, or Brendan Dillon plays on the right side, they can make that work. But nevertheless. Brendan Dillon is that shutdown defender. He can lay the body. He can also lay in front of the shots as well, like you said. His time on ice is pretty impressive as well. He can play a lot of time on ice with Quinn Hughes. And we saw there that he had three 20-point 20 uh, 20 seasons with the Jets of all teams. So if he's able to have production like that with the Jets, imagine what he could do with this Canucks team where you have guys like Quinn Hughes, Brock Besser, Elias Patterson, Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland. I could go on with the weapons that he could have to play with with this deep Vancouver team compared to a team like Winnipeg where he would also be just be coming home like we've said that he would have that chemistry already built in and I think he would fit in nicely with us as well. And he's coming off of his highest goal scoring season to date. So I think he's going to want to build off of that. And I think building that with Quinn Hughes would be great because Quinn Hughes is coming off of his best season of his career as far as scoring. So I think this defensive core for Vancouver could be looking pretty scary and pretty deadly come uh, next season if they're able to pull this off. Yeah, because the big thing is bringing a guy like Brendan Dillon and if he comes in on the left side and you're getting rid of Sidorov, then it does work out perfectly where you bring in a guy that can play on the penalty kill. The big thing to notice with him as well, he's a minute eater. You can see just last season he played 18 minutes and 44 seconds time on ice, which is the average of what he played. You can see the year before, 19, 18, almost 19, 20, 19, 19. This guy can eat minutes, kill penalties, lay the body, block shots. He's the perfect third-bearing defenseman for this 
this Canucks team, and he could come home and play for British Columbia. Now, when you do look at him, he is coming off his contract at $3.9 million, so he will be looking for a tad bit less than this. It could be in the $2 million range. It could be in the $3 million range. If I was a general manager, I'd probably be able to give you a better rough estimate on it, but with Brendan Dillon getting up in age, I think it's to the point he wants to be on a club. He wants to play hockey, so coming in at a cheaper cap hit to play for his home province in BC would be outstanding. Now the big thing is, and like we kind of talked about, obviously the left side is a tiny bit crowded. We only have three defensemen signed on the Vancouver Canucks. Two of them are left-handed in Quinn Hughes and Carson Soucy. In my opinion, these are your top left-handed defensemen. You keep these guys on the first pairing and the second pairing. Obviously you have guys like Sodorov who can play a bit of right if he does come back. But if you do miss out on signing Sodorov, if a team throws him way too much money, if the rumors aren't true that he is looking at taking a discount, Brendan Dillon is the perfect replacement, a guy that's going to bring the same physicality he might not be as big but he will play as big on the ice it's a guy that can score your goals help you in the playoffs kill penalties it's everything this team is looking for and griffin i know it's hard to say with zaddy big z how good he's been with this team but would you be totally shocked or upset if they did move on from zadorov and saved say three million in cap to bring in a guy like dylan instead I wouldn't be shocked nor too upset. I do love Big Z. I think he's a great presence to have, like we've said, not only on the ice, but also between the whistles, the game within the game that we've seen guys like Matthew Kachuk be so proficient at. So having a guy like Big Z is great in that aspect, but we do have some other guys that can ruffle some feathers. And if Brendan Dillon comes in to do that or comes into Vancouver, he will do exactly that, just not as big. I know a lot of people will be concerned about his age at 33, but He's coming off of a career uh, goal scoring season and just another 20 point uh, season. So he's doing great in that sense. And he's a has a plus minus rating of nearly 20 in the past two out of the two of the past three seasons. So if he's doing that, he's uh, great. Things are happening when he's on the ice. So what even with his age, that doesn't concern me that much just because of his production and just the numbers just don't lie. So anyone who's worried about his age, I don't think that's as much of a worry. The only worry would be sacrificing a little bit of size if you do lose a door of. But again, I think Brendan Dillon being that veteran guy as well could add a bit more for Vancouver than Zadorov could add as far as the maturity level. And I think with a younger team, with Quinn Hughes being the leader of that young team, I think that'll boast really well for him and it'll go, it'll pay dividends for this team, to be honest. And the thing is, too, even if Zadorov is brought back, if Brendan Dillon wants to come to this team on a cheap deal, maybe one and a half, two million, and they do work this out, these are two guys you can most certainly play next to each other. And it would be a physical force to have to go up against two wrecking balls, throwing over 200 hits per season. And what would you guys thoughts on bringing in Brendan Dillon? Would you rather him back over Sidorov? Would you rather bring both of them back and run just a chaos line? Do you still want to see Tyler Myers in the chaos giraffe line with him and Sidorov? Let us know down in the comments, but we'll hop straight into the second topic today, which is Canucks prospects get disrespected. Now, obviously, McKean's Hockey did a report, and they did have Jonathan Lekermacki ranked at number 12 on all NHL prospects. Tom Willander cracked this list as well, but they had the entire Canucks organization ranked ranked 16th among all NHL teams when it comes to prospects. Obviously, you look at this list, Jonathan Lakamaki straight at the top. Tom Williner coming in at second. These guys were both ranked in the top 30 in the entire NHL. Atu Ratu is a guy coming at third. Arsteep Baines, and you kind of work your way all the way down to six. And then why is Shelovs down at number six? This is ridiculous if you ask me. This is a guy that won playoff games for the Canucks. This is a guy that played in the second round for the Canucks. He won them a series. Having this guy ranked at seven or six in my mind is just ridiculous. Obviously, you work your way down. You still have a guy like Linus Carlson sitting at five. Jet Wu sitting at nine. But the biggest thing here as well is Elias Pettersson, DPD, is ranked at 10. This is a guy that is severely underrated in my opinion and having him at 10 is a little weird and in my opinion just having the Canucks organization ranked at 6 is not great as well and Griffin what your thoughts on these rankings It was it was something to look at as for sure I think like you said Shelaz being at number 6 if they're counting him as a prospect at this point when it's very clear that he's staying in the NHL from this point on now he's made his case as to why he has to stay for Vancouver and I definitely think he will so if that's the case throw him at number one and Lecker Mackey at number two just for that uh alone it's just it would be fair uh as well as DPD like you said he's super underrated it would like you'd like to see him be higher up on that list 
Baines is a nice fit as well. Linus Carlson got some playoff experience as well. So why is he as low as he is? I'm not too sure. And just ranking them at 16 overall, this is a team that had multiple AHL players play in the postseason this year. I'm not too sure how many other teams were doing that, but Vancouver seemed to be one of the few teams that was doing that and making as many lineup changes as they were making. So for them to be at number 16 and some teams that didn't even make the playoffs and have as much growth as Vancouver did or the season that Abbotsford had, I think it's ludicrous that Vancouver is ranked so low and just in the middle of the pack. They're definitely more than a middle of the pack prospect team. Yeah, and the big thing is, is just looking at this, comparing it to the 15 teams ahead of them. When you're looking at some of these players, Jonathan Lekamaki is a guy that won the World Juniors MVP. He led the entire tournament with scoring. He led his team to the postseason in the SHL Professional League in the Tier 1 in Sweden. Tom Wilner played for Boston College. He was outstanding for them. Atu Ratu had a career year in the AHL. Arshdie Baines got the call up. He was outstanding in the AHL. The big thing with looking at this, Baines was another guy that made the AHL uh, All-Star game and was MVP. You work your way down. Shelovs was in the playoffs. He was a starter. He won them multiple rounds. Jet Wu had a good season with the Canucks. He is an RFA, but he still had a great year, sorry, in Abbotsford. And then you work down to DPD, who's playing in the Tier 2 League of the SHL. Having these guys that are having extremely good seasons and rank this low is a little mind shocking and just a little weird to me, but I guess McKean is up to his old tricks again and he wants a controversy. Now looking at this, obviously with the Canucks ranked 16th, just looking at the draft picks for the next three year, they don't really have the picks this season to kind of just add more capital. They don't have a first, they don't have a second, they do have a third and fourth, they don't have a fifth, two, six, and a seventh. But after this year, they do have their first and second in both of the next two upcoming drafts. So obviously they can add to it. And what are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you think these prospects are ranked fine? Because in my opinion, She Loves at 6 is a little weird and isn't right in my opinion. What are your thoughts on the Canucks being ranked 16th? Let us know down in the comments. But speaking of comments, let's get into everyone's favorite topic, which is comments of the day. And the comment today comes from Political Incorrect Bus Driver. And they say, we didn't have the assets for him. And this was talking about the Jake Gensel video we did. And one thing that a lot of people commented was, hey, you guys don't have the picks for him. You don't have the prospects to get him. But in the video, Elliot Freeman said himself in 32 Thoughts that they want a middle round pick to acquire the rights for a team that willing to sign Jake Gensel. And if you look here, the Canucks actually do have two middle round picks this year. With the third and the fourth, they have a fourth next year and they have the fourth the year after. So... They do have picks and they do have what it's going to take to get Gensel. But if you guys enjoyed this episode and you want to be comments of the day tomorrow, make sure to go down and leave a comment. You could be featured on the next episode of Canucks Digest. While you're down there, share this with your friends. Leave a like, subscribe. We're trying so hard to get to 3,000 before the draft. I think it's July 15th. So it's just a little ways away. Make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. But I've been your host, Mark, with my co-host, Griffin. Take care.